Errol Spence Jr. and Terence Crawford are set to fight on July 29th, and it looks as though one of them hurt the other during sparring. The fight is looking to be one of the biggest of the year so far, and many people are looking forward to an epic showdown. Shakur Stevenson has to stick with his buddy in the end. Shakur stated, Bud is a bad I think Bud is one of the most slept on fighters. At the end of the day, I'm rocking with Bud no matter who he's fighting. Tony Bellew definitely thinks that Crawford will come out on top and he compared him to a freak. Tony stated, I did pick Bud the other day, but I just don't know because the size of Spence will be a factor in this fight. The mad thing is, I think Errol Spence might be doing really well and then I think he might get stopped. Which is absolutely nuts, I can't believe I'm saying that. Terence Crawford is a once in a lifetime fighter. He's exceptional, he's that good. There's nothing the boy can't do. He's still just blitzing people for fun, he's a freak of nature. I wish them both the best cause I love Errol Spence as well. Errol's a top fighter. His nickname is what he is, he is the truth. I expect him to bring the truth on that night when they meet. They'll draw the best out of each other. You'll see in patches of this fight the best of both of them. I just think Terence Crawford has less tread on his tires, and I think that will be the defining factor. He just might be more skillful. Brian McIntyre sees it being a tough fight, but he believes that the first couple of rounds will be the hardest. Brian stated, The first couple of rounds are gonna be real tough but then we're gonna start walking away with the fight like we always do. Bud stopped his last 10 opponents. Just maybe, Errol is gonna be number 11. Terence tried to claim that he'd be the greatest of his generation, but Spence wasn't buying anything that he was saying. I will be the first male boxer to actually capture the welterweight champion in two divisions, and that would solidify me as the greatest fighter of this era. Definitely not, man. I'm not gonna lie, Tyrant got the best matchmakers in the business. You ain't fought nobody, man. You haven't beat anybody undisputed at 140. Who you fought at 135, and who you fought at 147. Even you fought Sean Porter, even Sean Porter said- What did I do to Sean Porter that you could Sean do? Porter say, even said what he did, he did not Sean train Porter like he should. He didn't do the things that his daddy told him to do. What are you he's, talking about? Even his daddy it. said it. Even his daddy you, said it. You but heard that I got the Even his daddy said it. You but heard. Even Kel Brook, he was already broken. So was he broken you when you fought him? No, he wasn't broken. How come? I broke the other eye. He came off of I broke the other eye. Came yeah, that's how I got broke. Sean Porter definitely saw the difference between the two fighters when he stepped in the ring with both of them. Sean stated, Errol was prepared to beat me at my game and Terence was prepared to beat me at his game. Mentally, there's a difference. Errol likes to be commander in chief, likes to do what he wants to do. Against me, he chose to try to beat me at my game. Terence, I'm coming into the ring. This is what I'm gonna do, stop me. Somebody texted me the other day and I said, yeah, I feel the same way. If I had to bet my life on it, if I had to put money on it, a lot of money on it, I'd put my money on Terence Crawford. Crawford has revealed that Spence isn't too chill when it comes to sparring and he pointed out that Spence actually beat up Jamel Charlo in sparring. You know, let me and Errol handle this and you just sit in the sideline because we all know he be beating you up in sparring. You know what I mean? That's why you, you know what I mean? Was that a fact though? Is that well known? Uh, listen, I ain't gonna put out their business, but listen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's pretty much the most, the, the part where me and him start heating up and then he saying I'm not fighting nobody and this and that. And I'm like, dude, we on two different levels, bro. Yeah. Congratulations, you became undisputed. I take my hats off to you. You work tremendous tremendously hard to get to where you at and I respect that but the level that Charlo on and the level that Terrence Crawford on is two different levels don't nobody even be in this at his fights it's <laughs> night <and> day <laughs> Stephen A. Smith sees this fight going either way but he kind of sees Crawford winning by decision Smith stated if this were before the nasty car accident that Errol Spence got into, I had Errol Spence beating him because Bud's too small. I don't think that's the case anymore. I think Bud Crawford has grown into his body. I actually think he's the superior boxer. 
I think that Errol Spence is bigger and stronger, but Bud can box, got a lot of heart, isn't scared and can hurt you. If I had to bet, I'd bet for Bud to win by decision, but either of them could take each other out. Stephen Fulton had to pick his mate Spence to come away with the win. Fulton stated, I'm rocking with Spence. He's like my stablemate, plus his resume, he's got one of the best resumes in the sport of boxing. He's fought a load of good contenders and champions. I feel like Spence has got that power to break you down and the pressure to break you down. Crawford's got that street style and I like that. He's a lot more elusive, but I feel like Errol is a lot more put together and Crawford has a looser style. Well, according to Andre Ward, fans should be grateful to Crawford and Spence for sticking it out this long to make sure the fight happened. And he mentioned that the people behind the scenes had a great deal of responsibility for not letting it happen sooner. Andre stated, if everyone really knew what was going on behind the scenes and how that fight actually came about, I think a lot of people would give them guys a lot of apologies, even though I know they won't. They shouldn't be giving them a lot more credit. The fight is one that's going to be a great fight. I think it's going to be an all-time great fight. Those kinds of wheels, those types of resumes, and that skill set, it's impossible for it to not be a great fight in my opinion. But how the fight got made is not getting enough credit. They got together off to the side, not with the suit department. The suits made it messy. The suits caused a lot of the delay. I'm not saying all of it, but a lot of the delay. Fans were ecstatic when the face-off happened as that signified that the fight was definitely going to happen this time. Tim Zhu definitely thinks IQ will play a big part in the upcoming fight. Tim stated, I think Crawford wins. I think his IQ is three levels above Spence's. It's an interesting matchup as Spence will put on the pressure and we'll see how Crawford will adapt to boxing backwards. Jerome Ennis doesn't really care which of them ends up winning, but he's definitely calling out the winner. Ennis stated, I believe I'm the best option. I feel like everybody wants to see me versus Spence or me versus Bud. I don't think they want to see anybody else fight them. Errol Spence mentioned his car accident when he claimed that no man can hurt him. Really made me feel like nobody can stop me because I feel like if I can be driving how fast I, they said I was driving and I land on solid concrete, you know, getting thrown in the air, I feel like, you know, who can hurt me? Yeah. <laughs> like who can hurt me in concrete, you know, could, couldn't break anything in my body. So I feel like a man definitely can't break me. Well, it looks like Crawford might have a bit of an excuse if he loses since Shane Mosley mentioned that he got hurt by Spence while they were sparring. Mosley stated, I can only go by what I heard that Spence kind of did some damage to Crawford when they sparred. It's going to be hard for him to fight with a guy he's been in the ring with before, and they both know each other. They both know what's going on. Floyd Mayweather definitely knows a thing or two about how intense Spence can be when he spars. Floyd stated, Errol Spence, maybe he's a hell of a fighter. Now, one thing about me, I'm always going to give it to you 100%. You know, in training camp, when I was training for my fight before Guerrero, Errol Spence gave me solid work. He's a very, very young, tough competitor. So if I sit right here and not give that young kid props, you know, it'd be bad. After doing my time, I was off for a year. I came back, you know, I came back. He's one of the guys that pushed me to the limit. He made me work in a boxing gym, and you know, I like young guys like that that's in the sport that's going to push me to the limit and make me work. And Errol Spence pushed me to the limit also. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and check out some of our other videos on the screen right now.